radio for your soul. This is your host, Adrian Fonseca. It's so good to be on with you today. Praise be to God. There is so much going on in the world today. And sometimes you just need to take a breath and say, okay, everything is chaos. Everything's spinning. A lot of plates in the air. Got to catch them all. And it's good to every once in a while slow down a bit and remember the fundamentals. And I think one thing that we just don't know a lot about today is the virtues. We don't have virtue and we know less about what is virtue. So joining us right now via Zoom chat is Alan Smith with Bishop Sheen today from the snowy north. I heard it's 45 degrees in Canada right now. I'm looking outside and I stepped outside. It was like 90 degrees this morning. And I'm like, man, maybe I should go to Canada for the summer. Uh, but thank you for joining us, Alan Smith. Yep, you got a... Uh, there you go. Go ahead, Alan. Yeah, okay. Uh, you're welcome. No, it was... I woke up, it was 45 degrees and uh, we got the forest fires uh, creating a great deal of smoke and so it's keeping things a little bit cool. But um, it's that, uh, I want to just say the love of Christ that warms our hearts and uh, helps us to bear this uh, seasonal cha change. And in Canada, sometimes you can experience all four seasons in one day. Um, but uh, again, uh, we're used to this. I put the hoodie on this morning and uh, we're all good. Very good. Very good. Well, we love having you on. Uh, we are going through through the virtues. Now, we may want to recap a little because last week we were on retreat, so we didn't have it last week. And so we're picking up where we left off. Uh, so Alan, we're, give us a quick recap about uh, what we were talked about last time. Right. I, I, again, what Fulton Sheen does is he takes the seven virtues and gives us a little bit of help with, he's like our life coach. And uh, we went through the virtues of fortitude, uh, the virtue of hope, the virtue of prudence, and the virtue of faith last time that we uh, met. And uh, because we need to practice prudence in this world and how important it is to be prudent these days, especially with all the things going on. Uh, of course, we need that fortitude to endure the faith, um, endure the trials of this life, uh, have that hope in the salvation of Christ, the hope in Jesus, and of course, uh, have to have faith. And uh, so, again, you can see what Fulton Sheen is doing. He's saying, I know you're struggling. I know you need help. And so every week he went onto the radio airwaves and gave these catechism lessons. It was called the Catholic Hour back in the 30s and 40s, but really it was the teaching of the faith. And so in the season of Lent during 1940, uh, he gave seven lectures on the seven virtues and then tied them in beautifully to the seven last words that our Lord spoke from the cross as, you know, a teaching tool. And uh, today we're going to go through three more of the virtues, but use, uh, again, as a lens, the seven last words. And the first one we can reflect on today is uh, the virtue of temperance. And uh, of course, we uh, live in a world where we just um, feed ourselves, we indulge. Um, it's not just food and drink. Sometimes it's sports and entertainment. Uh, yet our Lord's on the cross saying the words, I thirst. And that's his battle cry for us to say, thirst for me. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to practice the virtue of temperance. And so when you wake up in the morning and you know, this is the day I have to overcome these struggles struggles of, of overindulging, what can I use as my motivation tool? And it's the words of our Lord, I thirst. Hmm. And so again, who wants to practice temperance in this world of buffets and um, everything's available to us. So uh, again, we need help. And Fulton Sheen gives us that help and gives us a few good ideas in his book, The Seven Virtues, uh, which is still uh, available today on Amazon. So again, it's a book that you can pick up and read yourself. Absolutely. And, you know, I love
love uh, the the virtue of temperance about relating to I thirst. It's it's so fitting because you know we in our modern era we have a culture of gluttony and we just have we just eat and drink whenever uh, we want and there is no sense of slowing down. And the Desert Fathers would talk about this and they say that to conquer all the other vices, the first thing to do is to conquer your stomach. Because if you can't even conquer your stomach, how would you face the other temptations that are gonna be plaguing you? And so fasting and these kind of practices are very, very good for us to be able to keep in mind. Now, does Fulton Sheen give any um, suggestions about how we can actually practice the virtue of temperance, especially when it comes to gluttony? Yeah. Well, he, um, you know, there's that old saying, uh, fail to plan, then plan to fail. So you have to have a game plan every day. And so he'd say, okay, how about we try these three things? Give up, if you're a smoker, give up the ninth cigarette. Um, like give away, you know, just give up one cigarette a day or two. Um, it's a little uh, thing, but give up one. And there's that time where you can say, okay, I can go without this cigarette right now at this moment. Uh, give up that second lump of sugar in your coffee. Uh, we all seem to like a lot of sugar and cream in our coffee. So there's that opportunity to say, hey, how about I just try to give up one cream or one sugar? Um, the one thing he loves to challenge us, he says, give up that opportunity to make a sarcastic remark. Um, you know, a lot of times I go through the day and I'm making commentary about people's conversations or how they look or how they dress. But for me then to think, okay, give up that um, those opportunities to make sarcastic remarks or critical commentaries uh, to build your character. So, but again, have that game plan to say, today I'm going to give up that cigarette. I'm going to give up that sugar or cream. I'm going to give up that sarcastic remark. Uh, so that's what he does. Make a plan and then try your best. And then at the end of the day, do your examination of conscience and see how you did. And then try again tomorrow. Hey, Amen. Amen, Alan. This is Tito. What you were saying is giving up that, that little sar sarcastic remark. I, I'm a huge uh, sinner in, in that area, and I'm, I'm tr trying my best. But what I wanted to reflect upon was you sound a little bit like St. Therese of Lisieux, giving up these little things little by little, which leads to giving up bigger things. Is, is that what you were trying to point out? Well, and that's what Sheen is. Sheen is saying, I'm going to work with you. And, you know, for you to quit cold turkey, we know that doesn't work, you know. But it's that whole thing. And you have to understand, uh, Bishop Sheen loved St. Therese of Lisieux. And in fact, Bishop Sheen was a professed Third Order Carmelite. Wow. Uh, in, in 1948, he enrolled uh, and became a Third Order Carmelite. So he has a Carmelite spirituality deep down. And so uh, I think he took a lot from St. Therese and then uh, put it onto the radio. So uh, doing those little things well for the love of God, it, it works today <laughs> in the year 2023. Now, Alan, let's go over to the sixth virtue, which is justice. And now Fulton Sheen relates this to it is consummated or more people might recognize it as it is finished. And so what say you about what Fulton Sheen had to say about justice? Yeah. Yeah. What uh, Fulton Sheen was trying to uh, give us as a teaching tool was, um, are you giving God his due? And uh, this is what's so important is that, uh, do we give God um, his glory, his praise? Um, you know, I think he wanted to point to the cross and said, you know, when we look at a crucifix, uh, do we realize that we had something to do with it? and that we need to make reparation. Uh, that's just when you make reparation, when you pay a debt. Um, and I think it's important that we have that mindset to say, what can I do to make up with God, to give him his due? Uh, our Lord from the cross was saying to God the Father, it is finished. I've done my job. I've done what you've asked me to do. Uh, again, he gave up his life for mankind. And so we can learn from the, that, that word, you know, it is finished to say, now I have to do my part to recognize my faults and give God his due. Um, so that's the important thing. Do we have God on our minds? And are we willing to, um, you know, to make up and to identify, to say that I'm a Christian and the cross is my banner. 
there? Do I carry a small crucifix with me? Do I put these gentle reminders on my desk to say, I'm a Christian, I follow God? Um, all these things. Sometimes we forget that we're even Christian, that we're even Catholic, because, uh, you know, we go about our lives busy, busy, busy. And then at the end of the day, we remember, oh, yeah, I didn't say my prayers. I didn't uh, have my devotions. So, uh, again, Sheen is saying, uh, have that plan to put God in your life, put a crucifix in your pocket, put one on your desk, have those holy cards and give God his due. Absolutely. And Fulton Sheen, in response to this, he says, and now that evil was spent in the final act of crucifixion, seeing that in justice, the last farthing was paid in the red coin of his blood and the mortgage against man paid back. He uttered his cry of triumph. It is consummated. And I, I think that's a wonderful thing, especially in this time where everybody talks about uh, debt forgiveness and all these different things. It's a lack of sense of justice. If you take out a loan, you got to pay it. If you wrong somebody, you need to make reparation. If you steal, you need to restore all these different things. And it's such a lost uh, situation. And we see this most perfectly in the innocent victim who paid the price out of justice to God on behalf of of those who <laughs> refuse to pay it ourselves. I think that's a beautiful thing. And Fulton Sheen explains it excellently in the seven virtues. But lastly, let's go through the seventh virtue, which is charity, a virtue uh, that is amongst uh, is the greatest of all virtues. And Fulton Sheen relates it. Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. Now, Alan, what are your thoughts? Well, Fulton Sheen explains that um, everything comes full circle. Um, you know, Jesus left heaven to come to earth and then he goes back to heaven. He returns to the father. And again, we have to have that same mindset to say that we were created by God for God and that we will return to him one day. Uh, but yet, uh, again, love is the greatest power that we can uh, use here on this earth, uh, the spirit of charity. Uh, you know, again, our Lord was giving up everything that was um, most cherished to him. Of course, he had gave up his possessions, uh, his clothes to the executioner, his, um, of course, his mother and St. John to each other, but he was saving his best to last. And that was his will. He was giving God his holy will. And how often do we say, I want to unite my will to the will of the Father? Uh, that's important. It's, it, it's a game changer for all of us. If we can just unite our will to the will of the Father, uh, just as Jesus did. It's the imitation of Christ. Um, and sometimes that's the hardest thing to do. Uh, we are very selfish by nature. It's about me, me, me. But when we can think of others, um, then of course, uh, that is exercising that virtue of charity. So uh, we need to practice that virtue to build up the muscle. And uh, that is the thing. But um, again, the perfection of all virtue is charity and love of God and love of neighbor. And of course, Fulton uh, reminded us that in his writings and his radio addresses and many of his television shows. And, you know, it's very interesting because this morning we were reading the, the gospel today and it was on the greatest commandment, which is to love God. And the second is like unto it to love your neighbor. And it's very interesting because we see St. Augustine, when he talks about this, he says, love God and do what thou wilt. And many people will respond to that and be like, oh, you could, I could do anything I want. That sounds like Protestantism. Well, once saved, always saved. Just love God and then you could do anything and no big deal. But what does Augustine really mean? He means exactly what our Lord says. If you love God, you will keep his commandments. So if you love God, then you are keeping his commandments and then everything else is all right, then do as you will. As long as you're keeping all the commandments and you're loving God and you're loving your neighbor, then everything else it's up to you. Uh, we're just about out of time, Alan. Uh, any last thoughts and where can people keep up with you? Well, you know, again, my last thoughts are practice the virtues. 
give it a try, <laughs> give it a try. And, uh, you know, I think we all try to avoid the seven deadly sins that's on our mind, but do we ever think, oh, I'm going to practice some of the virtues. So try to practice the virtues. Uh, of course, you know, watch Fulton Sheen, read Fulton Sheen, listen to Fulton Sheen. And you can do that by visiting our website, bishopsheentoday.com, because we need Bishop Sheen today. And so uh, on the website, bishopsheentoday.com, is hundreds of videos, hours of audio recordings. Uh, his books are all there. So, uh, you know, read Sheen, listen to Sheen, and watch Sheen. There you go. And bishopsheentoday.com bishopsheentoday.com thank you very much Alan Smith for joining us we're going to go into our game show Fear and Trembling that number 877-757-9424 877-757-9424 call now we always take the first caller we'll be right back hello this is Steve Gleason with your one minute tool